So let's get the view from Labour now. Uh, we're joined in the studio with Russia and Ali, who also speaks on the uh, Treasury Select Committee as well. Thanks very much for being on the programme. Hi. How much of a shock was it today when inflation just didn't fall? It was a huge shock, but in some ways it's not uh, surprising because what we've seen is that the UK has got some additional dimensions to the uh, crisis we face. First of all, other countries didn't have the Liz Truss mini budget fiasco, which has had a direct impact on people's mortgages. It has led to a follow on budget where the new chancellor had, has had to introduce a consolidation uh, package. So that's quite different from other countries. And also we entered into the pandemic with the uncertainties around Brexit, with a trade agreement that did leave outstanding issues around supply chain disruptions, you know, um, inflation, food related food price inflation uh, is higher uh, for us in terms of what we import from the European Union. So there are some factors that makes it harder for the UK. But I think uh, the, that overall, um, I would say that when you compare the UK to other countries on mortgages, the UK is worse off than France, than Germany. Uh, and that, I'm afraid, is down to economic mismanagement underpinned by political instability that we've had in this country for the last few years, but particularly the last year, which has consequences I, on the economy. It's obviously the easiest thing for Labour politically to blame the Conservatives for, for this. And I'm not saying that that's not... You know, there's no factor in this at all. I mean, but I just wonder if... There's also something you could say about the way that Bank of England has handled it, right? Because there's people who say that they were too slow uh, to react uh, to what happened and so are having to overcompensate. And also that they did pump an awful lot of money into the economy through quantitative easing and stuff as well, which has an inflationary sure. effect. I mean, I, I'll come on to that. If you can't say... If you can't, if Labour, if you think Labour shouldn't call out, I'm not the saying that at all. I don't, and I, I didn't, I'm, not, I'm not saying that, and I also and allowed I don't you know to. When we can't. I, 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 I'm absolutely not saying that, and I also allowed you to make your points. But I'm just saying that okay. the difficult question, yeah. I guess, is: Do you think this is partly because of the Bank of England as well? Well, I think that there is a there is a certainly an issue about the point at which quantitative easing should have been phased out mm. uh, and some of us, mm. uh, I certainly raised those issues about whether inflation was going to be transitory, mm. which is what the Governor of the Bank of England thought at the time would happen. Mm. His argument is that they didn't see Ukraine coming, they didn't see the energy crisis mm. coming. Uh, but we, uh, you know, we are much more vulnerable as an economy because of the Brexit uncertainties mm. and other factors that are quite unique to mm. the UK. So yes, one could argue that uh, it, with the benefit of hindsight, it would have been much better uh, for the Bank of England to take action earlier and phase in interest mm. rates gradually. Uh, but we did have a major pandemic. Uh, I think the, the other issue, though, is that last year, and it's not a political point, last year, again, we I raised these issues at the Treasury Committee, um, before the Liz Truss budget came, it was very clear that if she won, she was going to go in the opposite direction to the Governor of the Bank of England in terms of trying to uh, bring uh, inflation, uh, keep inflation under control, uh, and yet Liz Truss was proposing uh, a big, uh, budget uh, spend that was not, mm -hmm. it wasn't clear how it was going to be funded. Mm -hmm. And we were arguing that these di this divergence mm -hmm. was very dangerous mm -hmm. uh, and there wasn't enough co policy coordination. What we're seeing again is the current government isn't actually being coordinated enough with the Bank of England in terms of providing support to mortgage uh, mortgage holders. Uh, they could do, they could be much more uh, assertive well, in working with the bank as well as, but, but as well as not, not that, compromising that, independence, but just, certainly with the regulators. I'm just asking on the... Because my understanding, I'm, I'm no expert, is if you try to help people with their mortgages, then that is going to be... I mean, that's kind of negates the point, right? Well, you can do certain things. What you can do is make sure, first of all, uh, the government... Uh, has done very little um, and the regulators haven't done enough to make sure that savers have the uh, the interest rates that the increase in interest is passed on to savers. That's about 23 billion 
a year. If we're serious about taking money out of the economy uh, and uh, bringing inflation down, then the government needs, the Bank of England and the Financial uh, Conduct Authority needs to be more assertive in ensuring that banks pass on those saving rates to savers. What, what would you like, that would, how would you see that happen? What would you well, like well I think there's a role for the regulator to do that. If, uh, and also in terms of what the government sets out and, and um, encourages the, the banks to do, I know that the Chancellor's meeting the key some of the major banks later this week he needs to make it very clear that we expect to see uh, along with the governor of the bank of england and the head of the fca we expect more, uh, interest rates to be passed on to savers because that would help in terms of reducing the money supply in the economy the second thing is that the the the, the fca could do more in terms of making sure that they provide guidance to banks about uh, spreading out mortgages over a longer period of time. Now, we need to be careful mm -hmm. that that doesn't then mean the actual cost of borrowing in the long term mm -hmm. is borne yet again by mm -hmm. the, the mortgage holders. But if we want to take mortgage... Um, if we want to prevent uh, repossessions, then we do need to look at ways in which the regulator can direct uh, banks to be sensitive to repossessions and make sure that they put in pl place uh, plans to support them. If you look at the amount of profits the banks have made recently, uh, it's pretty phenomenal. So they could do more to prevent the distress, which would be damaging for them as well if people face repossession on a large scale. Uh, really interesting to uh, talk. Thanks very much for being on the programme uh, today.